Watch you guys got another video today we'll take a look at five important things to look for in a mini pc now these mini pcs are pretty expensive but if you're looking for a mini pc these are the most five important things i think that you should look for when purchasing a mini pc for the very first time and there's many different brands and manufacturers that make these but the very first thing i would look for is the connections and ports on the actual device itself so that's an important step to look for when purchasing a mini PC, just like these ones here that I'm showing you on the screen. So you can check the manufacturer's website to see a full breakdown of what type of ports and connections you can have on that device. Maybe it's audio that's important to you, or maybe it's HDMI and DP ports on here for multiple monitors. How many monitors does it support? Also USB ports, how many do you need? Do you need faster USB ports? Do you need a type C USB port on your device? You can go through and work out what types of ports you need. Maybe it's an Ethernet port that's important to you or super fast Wi Fi. Check all of the connectivity and all of that stuff that is available on their website and read right away through. And it's important that you make sure you get one that has all the connectivity exactly for your needs. Next up, we're going to be talking about your needs and also your budget. First off, let's talk about your needs. What do you actually need the mini PC for? Are you looking for general use, something just to surf the web, check your emails and maybe watch some YouTube videos? Or maybe you're looking for something a bit more advanced that can do some light gaming or maybe you want something that actually do video editing. Then you need to make sure you check the specifications of this device. Make sure the processing power is there and you also have ample of uh, memory inside that device so it can handle some of these tasks. And if you want to do something like gaming, be realistic. What sort of games do you want to play? If you're looking to play 720p games or 1080p gaming, that is going to need a pretty high spec system. And it's also going to need some adequate cooling. So make sure you check to see whether that person is showing you the cooling temperatures when you're playing games at those resolutions, because it is quite taxing for a mini PC. You're going to have to start thinking about the temperatures and cooling. What is the actual device capable of doing? Is it capable of dissipating the heat from that mini PC? You can see this is a Ryzen 7. This is one of the best mini PCs you can get right now on the market. But again, it always comes down to the cooling part of the actual device. Can it cool the actual uh, mini PC down enough to play games at uh, long periods of time? Because some people want to play games for two hours, three hours at a time. And again, you've got a bit of ventilation on the side here and you'll have ventilation on the other side. And there will be a, a fan on top of this as well, which is going to be blowing the air uh, into the actual device. And then we've got the extraction part at the very back, which I'll show you right now. You can see at the very top there, that is the extraction part where it's going to blow heat out. And it's important that you buy one that is capable of dissipating the heat from that little mini device. So what I try to do is when I do reviews of these is I will do temperature tests. I will do a temperature test when it's idle and when it's under load, i.e. from gaming or when it's under load from some sort of benchmark. And this is important because you'll generally get an idea of what the thermals are like. This one here is a pretty decent one at cooling. Now be realistic because it is a mini PC. So obviously running Prime 95 would not be ideal for something like this device because you would just be literally pushing the limits of this mini PC and it will probably start getting hot and overheating. So what your ideal testing would be, would be to play a game and see what the thermals get like when you're gaming and also do a thermal test when you're doing, say for instance, video editing or Photoshop or something along those lines. Now because of their compact nature, they're obviously going to generate a fair bit of heat inside that device and it needs to dissipate that heat out the back where the exhaust part is so it's important that you understand how these mini pcs work so what i'll do is i'll quickly show you a benchmark here of a, another machine that i had which had some thermal issues and you'll get a general idea and this will sort of give you an idea of what thermal throttling is you can see here we're at the cpu package of 44 celsius and uh we're going to be running this benchmark here and uh, do this uh, stress test on the CPU and you'll see it go straight up to a super high temperature. And that's because we're actually, uh, you know, using some sort of CPU benchmark here, which is going to 
obviously torture the actual CPU. It went up to 90 Celsius there, and we've now got thermal throttling going on, and also we've got some other issues going on here. So 90 Celsius, it drops back down to about 88, but you are getting thermal throttling. Now, this is what happens when you overtax the CPU too much. Uh, and this is what can happen with, say, something like a CPU benchmark, uh, like, say, Prime95 or this particular type of software, which is extremely pushing the CPU to its maximum capacity and then causing thermal throttling. Now, you're not going to get any of this if you're using it for general use or anything like that. But again, this is under extreme circumstances when you're doing a CPU benchmark and you're pushing the CPU to its maximum capacity. It is going to cause those issues. So under normal circumstances, you shouldn't be getting any thermal throttling or any of those issues at all. So let me show you a mini PC that had very poor thermals and very poor cooling. This was just running a benchmark and you can see straight away we're running into major problems. 99 Celsius went straight into an extreme, uh, you know, a thermal throttling. And we also had core max reaching maximum, uh, which will obviously damage the hardware. So if it's happening to you and you're seeing this, steer clear of those many PCs. So next up, we're going to be talking about the memory and storage and the type of hardware they're using inside some of these mini PCs. So if you're on a super tight budget, you may end up with something looking like this with unbranded parts in here. You're going to end up paying a lot of money for, you know, something that has very poor quality parts. It's important that you're getting something with branded parts that's well known and trusted that way it's going to have a little bit of longevity and it will last a lot longer. Whereas something like this is unknown and you may get the build quality inside is not quite as nice. So always check inside to make sure that you're getting these sort of uh, components in here. Let me show you this one here. This has really good cooling on here as well. And you can see there's a big chunk of copper on the left hand side with a big thermal pad on it to help cool down components inside there. And the reason for it is because this has a Ryzen 9 inside here, and this is going to be pretty powerful and it needs a bit more airflow. You can see there's a bit more room inside of the actual mini PC here to allow airflow and cooling, and this is important. So this is basically what you can expect. Now inside here, we do have branded components as well. We have Kingston memory and Kingston NVMe drives in here, and that's also important because you're looking for uh, those super fast speeds from branded manufacturers as well. Memory speeds are important and also having the decent uh, NVMe drive in here as well. This one does have, uh, you know, NVMe Gen 4 inside of this actual unit as well. So some of them do come with a M.2 SATA uh, type connection in here, which isn't good. This one has also upgradability, which is something else I want to talk about which is your upgradability. Can you upgrade? You can in ones like this, which has another M.2 slot here to allow you to put in, you know, more storage. Some of them have the actual SSD component in here, which allows you to put in an SSD for upgradability for storage as well. So are they surface mounted as well? Some cheaper brands might have surface mounted memory and not upgradable. So make sure you check inside this is another good example of a good mini pc kingston uh, drive here and we also have crucial ram inside of this unit as well you can see by the quality and the build quality of this mini pc is much more better than some of the other ones i've shown you and on the left hand side on the lid you can see we can put in a hard drive or an ssd in here which will give us adequate storage as well and this also comes down to this type of model as well which is allow us to put in another SSD in here. So if storage is a, you know, a thing for you, then you need to make sure that you have room for storage. Check the M.2 slot, make sure that is an NVMe and not a SATA drive in here and see what the capacity that it allows you to go up to. If there's no other place where you can put storage in, then you may only be able to use that slot there. Also the memory, check that speed as well, and also check the quality of it and make sure you can maximize the amount of memory that you're going to put in here. This one does come with some storage availability here, which allows us to put an SSD inside here for added extra storage, which is also a plus side for these mini PCs. But again, so let's just quickly summarize on what you should be looking for. Memory and storage, connection and ports, temperatures of that device and adequate cooling 
upgradability and quality components that you want to be looking for inside the device as well, like this one, Intel and Crucial on here as well. What your needs are for that device and what your budget is and do your research and look around because there is tons of them to be had at really good prices. If your budget is, say, £500, you can end up getting a pretty run-of-the-mill uh, mini PC for £500. And if you do a bit more research, you can end up with a Ryzen 7 uh, you know, mini PC for the same price. So just do your research and make sure all the boxes are ticked before you start dropping your hard-earned cash on something like this. Now, no mini PC is built equally. As you can see, this one does have a massive bit of copper on here with loads of decent thermal pads, room for upgradability and good quality components in it. So if you do your research, you can find them and they're all roughly the same sort of price if you're looking around. Just make sure it fits all of your requirements and needs and it can do exactly what you want it to do. And if you tick all those boxes, I'm pretty sure you're going to end up with a pretty decent mini PC and you're not going to end up with getting your fingers burnt by trying to save £200 and buying one that has a very poor build quality, you know, really poor quality components inside and the thing runs super hot. It's not worth spending all that money. You might as well spend a bit extra and get something that's a little bit more decent, in my personal opinion. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. If you've made it this far, you should now know exactly what you're looking for in a mini PC. Some good brands out there are Minis Forum uh, mini PCs. They are pretty decent. Also, B-Link. You've got your Intel Nooks, which are pretty good as well. Just be careful to make sure they're not uh, bare bones where you don't get, say, the RAM inside. You have to buy that extra. You might be thinking it's a good deal, and then all of a sudden you've got to add more money to it. It ends up being expensive that way. Buy one that comes fully complete and ready to go, and you should be okay. So whatever one you use or whatever one you choose to buy, let me know in the comments section below which one you've got now. If you've already purchased one, I'll be happy to read your comments. I shall catch you in the next video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support, and I shall catch you in the very next video, or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.